Good afternoon. I call to order the Lake Havasu City Council work session on Tuesday, June 28th, 2022 at uh, 5 p.m. If you'd all please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And uh, Ms. Williams, if you'd please call the roll. Council members Nancy Campbell. Here. David Lane. Here. Michelle Lynn. Here. Cameron Moses. Here. Jenny Coke. Here. here. <laughs> Vice Mayor Jim Dolan. I am here. Mayor Cal Sheehy. Here. Thank you. Thank you. And then item four is our public hearings. We're here at this work session uh, for uh, to discuss uh, a discussion regarding Lake Havasu City Code 14-04, uh, excuse me, point zero four point zero four landscaping and the recommended landscaping plant list. Mr. Morris. Honorable Mayor, Council Members, thank you so much. Uh, staff has provided the council the following items with your packet. Uh, City Code section 140404, which is landscaping and screening, it governs the landscaping standards for commercial and multiple family developments. Also included examples of landscape plans for a multiple family project, as well as a commercial project. And uh, we'll, we'll, I'll re briefly review those with my presentation. Uh, staff also included a recommended landscape plant list that's available at our city website. Uh, a little overview, uh, the landscaping uh, regulations apply to all multiple family, mixed use and commercial and industrial development on lots over 10,000 square feet. Uh, there's a minimum lot area to be landscaped depending upon the use, which is the, zo the zoning. Um, so multiple family requires 20% of the lot to be landscaped, mixed use 15%, and commercial or industrial 10%. Uh, there are also some minimum landscape material sizes. So trees need to be 24 inch box size, shrubs at least five gallon containers, and then a minimum of two inches of decorative rock. Uh, there's also required to be a 10-foot landscape buffer along the street right away with one tree for every 40 feet of street frontage and one shrub for each 25 feet of street frontage. So here is an example of a multiple family residential property or a project. Um, in the upper left here, you'll see the, the, the requirements for uh, the, the landscaping buffer, the trees and shrubs based on the frontage. And then there's the, below that is the type of, um, of planting materials. And then uh, at the very bottom is the um, landscape, landscape rock area. And I'll do a little example here. So um, with an over overlay here, you, the, the light green is the 10 foot landscape buffer uh, with required trees and shrubs. And then uh, there's decorative rock around most all the property. Uh, together, uh, this landscape plan uh, has 24% of the total lot landscaped and 20% is required. So it meets all those requirements for the landscaping. Um, here's a commercial example. This is a gas station here on, uh, on the south side. Um, and it again has the, co the computations for the number of trees and shrubs that are required. For this particular project, there are 14 uh, trees required in the landscape buffer and 22 shrubs. And you'll see they provided the 14 trees and then it shows 113 shrubs. So they went well up and above the shrubs. And then there's more information about the different types of materials and the calculation data. So again, here's the um, lay overlay. It shows the 10 foot landscape buffer with required trees and shrubs. It also shows some uh, decorative rock um, and parking lot landscaping. And then there's an extra landscaping material uh, along the alleyways in this case. 10% um, is what's required for this commercial development. They went well and above that 23% of the total lot area is landscaped. Uh, these are just two examples of uh, multiple family and uh, commercial projects that we review for, through the design review process. Um, also in your packet was the recommended plant, plant list. It consists of plants that can be adapted to desert environments in the southwestern U.S. Uh, and plant species have very low, low or low to medium water use requirements. And it highlights plants that are specific to Lake Havasu City's environmental conditions. It was created with the intention of helping residents, businesses and landscapers make informed decisions on which landscaping plants to use and help conserve water. 
And the finally, uh, final slide here is for landscaping maintenance. Uh, it's covered in our development code. Um, any landscaping or irrigation needs to be maintained in orderly and healthy condition. Uh, make sure things are working. Uh, any reports of unmaintained landscaping are investigated through the code enforcement process. Uh, so with that, that's a brief overview. Um, open any questions and of course discussion, uh, whatever the council leads. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Morris. Yeah, Councilmember uh, Campbell, I uh, wanted to bring this uh, project forward, so I'll turn it over to you uh, for any uh, comments, discussion, or questions. Well, thank you, Mayor, and thank you for the presentation and all the information. I dove into the 10 pages pretty hard, um, and I have some simple recommendations. First on the requirements that you, is that a requirement versus a suggestion, or was it required? The, back, the slide that you just, go back, slide. Back, one more, uh, one more. Um, or contains plant species having very low, low, and low medium water use requirements. If I, I, I kind of read it as just suggestions, or is it clearly requirements? These are recommended, so they're the plants that do best in this region. Right, okay. Well, I'm gonna just jump in with uh, six ideas that I came up with. I'd love to hear other people's point of view if they like to. One, I'd like to see uh, update landscaping requirements to very low and low water use only um, through the next, I don't know, phase or so while we go through this drought, if we ever get out of it. Um, in regards to page three on the parking landscaping, uh, you gave us a whole presentation and on page three it showed uh, parking structures. Okay, it was on my I legislate. It is on page work session. I'm gonna go to landscaping. I'm gonna go to um, the actual cold, cold. Where is it? Uh, where? Landscaping plant list. Okay, commercial. There we go. All right, on page. Nope, that's not it. I was there. There it is. Okay, let's go to page three. Thank you. Appreciate that. One more, oh. okay, right there. Four. Okay, page four, landscaping screening Lake Havasu City Development Code. I know that this was not put in place back decades ago, and I just think it's extremely outdated. Um, if everybody would go to that page four, you can see what I'm talking about, where they're asked, as you drive around town, you'll see that we never implemented this, so I don't even know why it's still there. I think our city manager always says, if it's not, we're not using it, shouldn't be there maybe. Yeah, if reality doesn't reflect code, that's right, okay. So there's that one. So that's an easy, just kind of, can we possibly just remove that if, unless there's a reasoning why that's still there and why, why we are not enforcing it. I just think it's more important to have parking spots than actual landscaping structures. Um, allow only drip systems, which will reduce the water by 70%. Um, I see a lot of geysers, I call them geysers, I don't know what you guys call them, but as you drive around, you'll see just uh, landscape pipes that are broken, just shooting up in the air, flooding the streets, and I see it over and over and over, and I know that code enforcement contacts everybody, but I'm questioning after so many contacts or how many times do we reach out to them, is there any uh, fines or any consequences to continued geysers shooting broken pipe. Um, so I'd like to see more harsher code enforcement on all exa existing landscaping with potential fines for reoccurring irrigation damages resulting in water running into streets, including a request for maintenance, example, vacant properties with dead plants, excessive weeds, et cetera. Why am I bringing this up now? Is because we were talking about expanding our code enforcement. And as a business person, I always like to give clear direction to new employees so that they can move forward and do better quality work for all of us. Uh, for the buffering on commercial, I'm very con concerned and a lot of my constituents have come to me with, there's no consistency. We can pick whatever trees, plants, walls, colors we want. Something else I'd like to just discuss moving forward. We did a RUDAD study. We've done beautiful landscaping on certain parts of our highway, and it, then we have a pink wall and we have a blue wall. So anyways, I'd like to talk about that. And um, item six, uh, well, I put down item six is the alternative and adjustments. The zoning administrator may approve alternate types of design of landscaping, buffering, and screening requirements unless specifically prohibited for that type of property building or use of code in the zoning administration 
uh, determines that the alternative provides at least equivalent quality visual appeal screening cooling. Basically, uh, it removes all lack of consistency in codes. And I know in a business, I always put policies in place. And I really wanted my employees to follow those policies. And when they come back and they say, oh, well, I can change it any way I want later, um, most people that are um, in leadership pretty much want to follow policy. So I was concerned. Uh, um, we have several codes like that in building and parking that literally says whatever's here can be overturned by the direction of staff. And that's all I have for you today. All right. Uh, Mr. Mayor, yes. can, can I ask um, Council Member Campbell to give us... Do you have them the the letters and numbers? Yeah, the, the conversation she was just having was on page ten. No, I understand. I, I have the paper copy. I'm wondering, can you give me like for the last one? It was H for alternatives adjustments. The buffering. Could, do you have that the letters and numbers or no? Oh. Just so I can find it quickly in here. Yeah. That would be that would be on page. It was the last page. Page ten. Um, on the attachments that I see here, basically that was um, on the codes. Yep. Yeah, it's um, letter H, yep, page 10. Yes, and then the other one, the buffering, what page is that on? Uh, that was page four. Oh, buffering, yes. Sorry, I just wanna be able yep. to refer to it. The landscaping and screening was on page nine and screening standards. And I know a lot of screening standards say in here that there should not be any chain link and I see that that's not something we've been enforcing 100%. I mean, it depends on what side of the road you're on, I guess, too. And the other thing that I've noticed um, on the screening that they'll say mechanical should be in the back of the building or hidden by a shrub or something, I have literally seen that not happen as well. I don't really wanna get into all that. I just kinda wanted to stick to those six points that basically are just saying, let's clean up the code. Let's just move forward with um, looking at reasonable plant usages, consistency, and follow through for better direction of our code enforcement. Do you have any other questions, Councilmember Lane? No, I have, I, 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 I'm following with what she's saying. I, I think my major one is that the, the last one, the zoning may approve alternative types of designs or landscaping. To me, it seems like everything else ahead of this and it's pretty much garbage if you can come and change it up. Like, I, I think that just needs to be taken out. Either you can do it or you can't do it. All right. Yeah, so, uh, just for clarification, Councilmember Campbell, you'd mentioned on the uh, landscaping area of the parking lot, which would have been page four of our document, mm -hmm. uh, that that's not what we're doing. So uh, the figure 14.04-2 gives just a, a sample configuration, but really what the code is saying is that 10% of the interior parking uh, space should have, should have landscaping. Is that is that not what, and then this just gives some examples of, of what that might be. I agree, like. but what I'm saying is we are not using anything like these examples in this, and it might encourage people to think that we're encouraging this kind of parking um, within our parking structures. Anywhere in town that you go, I think we're filling up with um, parking. We need more cars and spots than we actually need trees to water and maintain. Not to mention, I have noticed, had a lot of complaints about parking, especially on McCulloch, where those trees drop flowers and debris into people's vehicles, their boats, their cars, lots of complaints there too. So I'm just listening to my constituents. These have, there have been concerns in the past and um, I just, was hoping to update some code, unless you guys think it's all perfect the way it is. Sure. Yeah, so I'm just a little confused because then in a later statement, you had mentioned that you want continuity and consistency and landscaping requirements, but then you want to get rid of them in a parking lot? I'm bringing up just this particular code should not even be in here. No Consistent. landscaping requirements in a parking lot at all? I don't think so, no. Okay. I just want to make sure. I'm yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. If you yeah. drive around town, you're not going to see a lot of landscaping in the parking lots because they need parking spaces there. So even if the 10% consistency, I mean, on McCulloch, I don't even know if we cover that. Nobody does. So if you're a new builder coming in, a contractor, and I'm just speaking from experience, how we sometimes mm -hmm. treat one person differently than we treat a different or expect different expectations out of them. So right now, if somebody wants to build on McCulloch, they clearly don't have to put in one tree or do you, like for instance, next to Sam's, you know, Sam's Shooters, a little lot there that was for sale, has no parking in the back. Where's that 10% coming in? 
hopefully we don't have staff or code coming back and saying you need to try and put a tree in there to get your 10%. I just really think that we need to overlook, I mean, start looking deeper into some of these 10 pages of codes. There's a lot of verbiage in there that I just think that we can clean up. I know we do a lot of cleanups on a lot of different codes and I just have been one that has tangled with this one before because what you see later is contractors will say, I'll put that in there because they asked me to, but I have no intention of ever watering it and it's going dead. And we don't, it doesn't seem like we have any consequences. And you know, you can have dead plants and broken pipe and you have no consequences. So if we are hiring new code enforcement, how do we clean up something as simple as this and make it really crystal clear for not only the commercial, people, but the code enforcers to do a better job. Okay. That's all. And uh, Mr. Morris, maybe you can address uh, when a building permit is pulled and someone builds something, how do we make sure that they're conforming to this plan? Yes. And thank if you, you could also address the uh, alternatives and adjustments that the zoning administrator can make those yes. adjustments. Thank you for the questions. As far as the alternative, uh, that's pretty standard language in a lot of codes to give uh, the zoning administrator or whatever set code section it's under uh, some flexibility for situations that arise that are outside the ordinary. It's fairly standard. Uh, it's not something we, we would like to rely on, but we can from time to time as situations do arise. Um, as far as the, you'd mentioned uh, parking in common, um, like uh, next to Sam's there, um, th those areas that are part of parking in common plans, uh, they just have to meet the landscaping that's part of that master plan. So it wouldn't necessarily be uh, required to do that 10%, it's whatever that parking in common master plan is showing for the landscaping. Um, well, I went through a lot of these and a lot of them showed that some of them should have been this way and they were not. Yeah. So again, I'm, I'm not trying to change the world here, I'm just trying to update some codes like we've done in the past. Yeah. And I'm sure you can appreciate the parking in common has been around for a long time. It was master plan back in the early mid 90s and those plans haven't really it wasn't, wasn't all done at one time, so those plant master plans are, are kind of guidelines at this point, and there's not a lot of redevelopment happening in the original uh, downtown area there. So um, we try to get things to match that parking and common plan as projects come in, but not very many really arriving at this time. And I'm, I'm sorry, I forgot the last question. Uh, what happens uh, when they get a building permit and then we require the 10%, yes. how do we ensure that? Thank you. Um, that's gone. That's done through the design review process. So in if, with the submittal package for your building permit and you know, offsite improvements in that, there's also a design review that is reviewed by city staff to go over the development code requirements, including uh, landscaping. So those would be reviewed. Uh, the landscaping plan would be reviewed. If there are red lines, we would make comments and ask them to address those and resubmit. It goes through that resubmittal and review process until it meets the code. And then um, we're okay to issue it uh, from the planning standpoint. So there is review uh, per the development code for landscaping as part of our design review process. Have uh, contractors been successful with the drip systems moving forward? Are they using them more? I have seen some of them do them. They do a beautiful job. They use the very, very low water usage plants. They put the drip systems in there, and I think it's just a positive solution. I don't want to turn into an HOA city, but as we move forward and I have constituents coming to me, talking to me, concerned about these items, I, yeah, it's my due diligence to come here today and bring this to you. Well, frankly, I'm not sure ex exactly which one of them use which they use drip systems or uh, like the the adjustable bubblers and that sort of thing. Uh, I'm not aware of any of that use you know sprinklers or anything like that, obviously. But they don't. I don't think they necessarily all use the little drip. When I think of a drip system, I think the little black tube that with the mm -hmm. drip, drip, drip. Correct. Um, there are other types of watering, obviously, that uh, use less water than a, a you know broadcasting, uh, but uh, like the other uh, types of, uh, not necessarily drip, but zero scape or low, uh, low water usage uh, types of irrigation. Um, but uh, certainly uh, I'm not aware of who uses what specific types, but they all have to supposed to be irrigated as part of their landscaping plan. Uh, Serenity Dental is a good example of that. They've done a beautiful job out there. It's all a drip system. As I walked past there and I saw Arby's shooting geysers and McDonald's shooting geysers, you know, I've called and talked to people, not you, but others. and. Um, it, they're consistently breaking and PVC pipe gets brittle and those sprinkler heads, you know, I've dealt with HOAs that I had to deal with all of this. So 
I'm just trying to bring ideas and new concepts and solutions that could actually protect our roads from having a lot of water overflowing. Plus, not only that, I've seen where the sidewalks are literally eroded down to the pea gravel because our the, the base for because it destroys the alkali absolutely destroys concrete if everybody has one that's constantly leaking in their backyard and doing damage we know what we're talking about so it's a lot of water waste we know that the drip systems seem to last longer and are better for environment and less water usage so this is why i'm recommending it that maybe we can discuss it over the next until we get out of a drought and see if it really improves uh some of this it's a lot of people have already done it. I'm not telling you to go out there and redo it, but I'd love to have the conversation that basically says we should, if you're, if you're an owner of a commercial uh, property, maybe you might want to consider a couple of these options and it'd be in the best interest. And if you don't maintain it and we keep seeing that there might be consequences in lieu of fines, that's all. So how does that look for you? So you're wanting to change the code that we require them to use certain plants and if, if there's a leak, they, after so many times, they're going to get fined for that leak. Right. Okay. Yes. Is, uh, um, I don't support that process. I mean, I, I think the process that we have with the recommendation, a recommended uh, landscaping plant list and, um, and tools and resources that we can give to, to business owners and property owners uh, throughout our community um, can do that. I, I don't want to be punitive. I think that people do want to comply. Uh, but... Uh, other members of the council, if you have any questions or, or thoughts to weigh in so we can give direction to staff on, on how to proceed uh, with Councilmember Campbell's uh, recommendations. Mr. Mayor. Yeah, Councilmember Lynn. Am, am, I, am I missing it somewhere in here? I mean, do we have nothing in this specific ordinance that talks about the sprinklers, like nothing in landscaping? There's yes, if you go to um, after page 10 uh, in the packet that you're reviewing there, uh, there's the Lake Havasu City recommended landscaping plant list. Um, and so that's just a recommendation. It's not uh, I'm, I don't mean plants. I'm sorry. The sprinklers. Uh, that, well, this sprinklers would then be associated with whatever plants you put in. Well, but where does it say anything about sprinklers? Like we're in a time right now, we're really talking about water conservation. So I can see where she's going with mm -hmm. this. And I don't see anything in here that talks about what we should be using to conserve water with these landscaping. Like, I'm wondering why that isn't in here. Yeah, so the intent is if that you use low use water plants, that you would then use low use That's water. That's intent, but it doesn't yeah. state that in here at all. Uh, on this recommended landsca uh, uh, landscaping plan, it does. So if you want to be punitive and have a code that says you can only use these types of sprinklers and these types of plants, w we can have that discussion and change the code. Uh, Again, I, it's not something I support. I think through rec recommendation tools and uh, access to resources for citizens and businesses that we can accomplish the same goal. But I'm all ears uh, to hear what other members of, of the council have to say. The, the concerns that you're having are like when we drive down, we see the little black sprinklers and they're, and they're broken and stuff. I, that, that is a concern because mm -hmm. that is a waste of water. So yeah, I think somewhere in here it should talk about that. Whether it's finding them or changing the way that they irrigate, I, I think it should be in here. Mm -hmm. And it does mention in the code that they have to maintain all their landscaping. Mm -hmm. Have we done anything? Have we enforced anything? Do we go back? What does that look like? As if I'm a new code enforcement person, I want to know what is right and what is wrong and what I'm looking for or what I'm complaining about. If I'm a, a citizen that sees something, what does that look like? No, and I agree. I mean, I see that in the code, I understand what you're saying, but my landscaping at home is low use. It goes on at 6 p.m. I'm at work. And so I don't know always until either a neighbor mentions something. It's on for 10 minutes. I don't know until I get my bill at the end of the month or a neighbor says something to me and then I immediately repair it. But I, I don't go check my, my irrigation. So would I be fined in that situation where I'm not intentionally trying to waste water? Uh, of course not. That's not what I said. I said commercial and multi-use is what we're talking about. And multifamily is what we're talking about here. And I said, if you have been contacted several times, like some of, there are some bad ones right on your street over there that when I walked past there, I would constantly text them, bring them messages, let them know it was broken. And every week, every week after every week after six years, when do we step in and say enough is enough and what does that cost? Or how do we enforce it? Of course, I'm not saying your backyard that you're not aware of and you get one leak. Mm -hmm. That makes no logical sense to me. We're all been there with a water break somewhere. But what I'm saying is the commercials 
um, that are usually corporations, not all of them, but the most of the time, the managers must not let corporate, corporate's not helping them out. How do you eventually get through to them that we don't want to walk by geysers that are shooting in the air, you know, um, over spraying cars that go by and, and so on. That's what I'm trying to get at. M Mr. Mayor, if I may. Yes, um, Mr. Mars. And Council Member Campbell, I appreciate your input there. Um, to my knowledge, I don't recall where there was one report of water to code enforcement maybe six, five, six years ago. I, I don't recall any recent reports for code enforcement action on irrigation. So if, there, if you see something, please feel free to contact code enforcement. That's part of what we do. Uh, we'll be happy to check it out. Um, frankly, I don't know of any reports for irrigation that's been uh, missed. Well, I contacted a lot of staff about it. So obviously it didn't go through the right process. So obviously contacting I guess we'll contact code enforcement next time that I send it to her. Um, you know. Yes, you can please send it to her or to me and we'll make sure it gets addressed. Yes, ma'am, certainly. Is there any other feedback or comments or questions from members of the council? Mayor? Yeah, Council Member Moses? Yeah, I'll throw my two cents in. Um, I, I, I don't really want to go down the road of being punitive uh, with, you know, water leaks and irrigation leaks and stuff like that. I think the water bill uh, at the end of the month will be punitive enough uh, for any common sense business owner to get it fixed. So I don't want to go down that road. I think the uh, the drip system sprinkler, um, I, I think that's kind of interesting to me. I thought uh, that was an interesting thing to bring up. What if we were to require that. I don't know how much more expensive that is. that would be, you know, what kind of a burden we'd be putting on our builders or our commercial um, people, but uh, that is kind of interesting. Maybe something we could explore to to help us uh, really curb some of our water, water usage. Yeah, thank you for those comments. Uh, Vice Mayor Dolan? I'll submit my two and a half cents. Um, I... It, I'm a big fan of if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, if we're having some, if we're having issues with, I mean, we have a couple different things here. One of them is if we have some bad users that are having some water issues, then I think we definitely need to figure out how we can get them to respond, get it fixed. I mean, if it says in code they have to fix it, um, then I think we need to do that. It sounds like maybe it hasn't, if it hasn't gone through code enforcement, it should be going through code enforcement. Um, we do have somebody else coming on code enforcement, so maybe, um, maybe the direction from council would be that we want to see code enforcement go after this and, and make sure that if it is damaging streets and sidewalks that, that we're fixing it. Um, like I said, I just get a little worried that we turn into a H big HOA and we turn into California. So I'm, you know, less government control and I just get a little nervous if we start, you know, regulating this and regulating that. I mean, the, the low water plants and the drip only system, I mean, that it, if that's something we want to address in the name of water conservation, because we, we are having uh, droughts and such, I think that's definitely, you know, something we might want to look into. Um, you know, like when we start getting to tier two and tier three, the city's going to have to do something. And, and then that might be something we have to do at that point. So we might as well maybe get ahead of that now and have that discussion. Um, you know, as far as the parking landscape, I, I don't know. I mean... Like I said, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, you know, unless we have actual issues with complaints of specific, you know, I know when I put my building in, it was annoying that you had to put all these plants in, but yeah, then I looked at what, you know, desert plants I could get and stuff that doesn't need to be maintained as much. And you know, it's just part of the process, but you know, if you don't, then you're not gonna have anything. So I'm, like I said, I'd, I'd, I'd be willing to look at the low water plants and the drip only systems in the name of, you know, water conservation. But as far as changing up the other stuff, I, like I said, I. I just think maybe we need to have code enforcement um, address it and then maybe let us know how it's going from there. So thank you. Yeah, thank you for your comments. Um, yeah. Mayor, one other thing, if we could just then look at the landscaping code for that 14.04-2, remove those concepts out because as far as I'm concerned, I don't think there's a whole lot of property left over that that would even be um, reasonable. And again, I have had complaints about trees around the cars and some like them because there's some shade. I get it. But uh, that whole section makes no sense to me to take away parking spots um, when most of us are not doing it at this point. Yeah, thank you for your comments. We'll collect all those. We'll hear from the rest of the council and then we can uh, wrap up our conversation. Uh, Councilmember Lane, did you have any comments? 
Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, uh, I'm looking at the, the picture that Council Member Campbell was talking about, and to me, it's just an idea picture. It's not a requirement picture. Um, saying if, if this is how you're going to configure your parking lot, this is how you might want to do your trees. Um, Luke, you already answered some, one of my questions was, how many complaints have we received through code enforcement over sprinklers? You say we've had one in the last couple of years. Um, the other question I had was, um, our code enforcement officer, um, has she ever come to you and told you that she doesn't understand what it is her job is when it comes to this type of an issue? No. Okay. Thank you. So she has a, a good grasp on what the code is when it comes to sprinklers. Um, I know for myself um, and many of the, the city departments here, I used to have a Sue Now app uh, myself. If I see where there's an issue that's a violation or somebody, one of my constituents calls and says, hey, here's a problem. I used to have a Sue Now app and I reported directly to the city and it, it goes to whatever, whether it's the police department, parks and rec, uh, code enforcement and then they take care of the issue from there and you get follow-up as to, to what happened with it so uh, for those citizens out there that may have concerns about um, sprinkler overreach um, definitely use that that app uh, as far as telling people what kind of sprinklers they have to use or what kind of plants they have to use uh, I do believe suggestions are the way to go at this point I don't think we're we need to uh, be telling people exactly what it is they need to do. To me, that's government overreach. Um, and we don't need to be telling people, you have to use this kind of sprinkler head, you have to use that kind of plant. Here's a list of suggested items. If they're using low, low, low water, they're gonna use a drip system that uses low, low, low water. They're not gonna put in a high volume water system and use low, low, low plants. Uh, as far as the alternatives and adjustments, um, I think those are important to have in here that, that gives our staff the ability to make changes where it's required. And uh, I would hate for somebody to come in to have a plan and say, this is the, the plan that I have. And we say, oh, you know what? Uh, based on the code, you got to have uh, 37 trees just like this there. Um, I don't think that's right. I don't think we should be doing that. I think we should be able to have uh, the leeway where if the 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 concept is correct, let's let the, the staff make those adjustments as necessary and, and not have them so tied down that, that we have to deny somebody's application because um, they may not be able to squeeze that one extra tree in there or um, the, the air conditioning unit won't fit on this side of the building so it has to fit on this side of the building. So uh, I think we have to have the alternatives adjustments in there. And I think going any farther than what we have is just way too much overreach on, on the part of the city. We don't need, um, I think it was Council Member Dolan said, we don't need to HOA Lake Havasu. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for your comments. I just yeah. wanna make a s statement to that. If you go back to the first page, we're already telling them how many plants they need, what mm -hmm. size they need to be, where they need to be put. We're already doing that just because it's my idea to change the quality of the plants or the depth, the um, irrigation that we might use. I don't see how this is government overreach other than what we're doing already. So I just wanted to correct that, that we are already telling them how much, where, when, and what size plant that we need. So we're already doing it. And I, I disagree. We're suggesting to them, we are telling them how many plants they have to put, but we're not telling them what kind of plants and exactly what plant they have to put there. Um, but having this other section that's on page 10, section H, if it doesn't work for that piece of property, the staff has the ability to change that. And I think that's important. So. Yeah, thank you. Councilmember Koch, did you have uh, some comments? I, you know, I, I understand the, the, need and, and desire for us to continue to be on the forefront of the conservation side. Um, and, you know, maybe people moving here are not familiar with all the different types of different water and irrigation systems. I mean, where I moved from, we didn't have bubblers. That was not something that you had. You actually had a sprinkler that you went out and hooked up to a hose. So there is probably some education that we could do. So I could definitely see uh, maybe with a recommended plant list, maybe a recommended um, list of the different types of irrigation with the types with the amounts of water that they use and what kind of savings uh, to your water usage as well as your bill perhaps that we could put that in as an educational piece um, to help them make the best educated decision for them and that's yeah. everything else has already been said yeah thank you 
Yeah, no, I, I agree with Councilmember Koch. I think with the Lake Havasu City recommended plant, landscaping plant list, it identifies the uh, the different plants by use of water. Uh, then goes into if you want the Lake Havasu City specific species, they're highlighted. And then to Councilmember Campbell's point of of overuse of water and how do we re how do we regulate and maybe educate and, and control that? Maybe we talk about some of these innovative uh, watering programs like the the drip system that, that you're mentioning. Mm -hmm. Identify what those look like, uh, what what those costs might might be, um, how you maintain them, and those types of things, um, and get that included with this this plant list uh, that might be able to to kind of bridge that gap of, of the conversation. Uh, would that be something that, that would work, Councilman Campbell, for, for uh, the purpose of this conversation? I'm getting pretty used to little baby steps. I'm pretty happy with about anything. But um, the other thing is, are we um, okay in like grass turf and uh, a commercial and right now? I know that you have it that's grandfathered in, but I'm saying, is this a something that we would allow? is grass in people's um, commercial 10% area? Well, typically we don't see grass uh, as a landscaping material. Uh, more often than not, we'll see uh, artificial grass. It's gotten much better than it was years ago. So we see that sometimes. And, and that's something that, again, the zoning administrator can make a determination whether that's acceptable. And a lot of applications, it looks pretty good. Um, but the grass, normal like lawn grass, is not on the list of a, a set of, of suggested uh, landscaping materials. And we frankly don't see much of it. Uh, I don't think I've seen real turf grass on a design review uh, landscape plan um, since I've worked here, actually. But there have been some of the uh, artificial grass. Yeah, so as far as uh, the direction uh, to staff, if we could update the uh, uh, suggest or the recommended landscaping plant list, uh, add in the, the watering uh, techniques and the new technologies that are available, what those look like and, and uh, identify what the um, maybe cost savings could be by using or uh, implementing uh, different uh, varieties of that. I know tonight we talked about bubblers and drip system. I, I don't know through uh, the work, uh, maybe Dr. Wilson, we can identify others. I don't know if, if that's uh, what, what that might look like, uh, but that would update that and then through education, um, and outreach through our website, through code enforcement, uh, we can identify what those look like. Um, you know, tonight's conversation was about um, landscaping uh, requirements. We'll, we'll have further conversations about water conservation as a whole um, as, um, as the, the drought continues on, and that's very specific to, to uh, uh, total water conservation. Um, is, that, uh, is that comfortable for members of the council? Is there anything else we'd like to adjust or, or include? All right, Mr. Knutson, yes. Mr. Mayor, if I can. Um, uh, thanks to the good work of uh, Dr. Uh, Joel Wilson over the uh, many years he worked for uh, Lake Havasu City. He's since retired and under, under contract now with the city, so he still assists us uh, to a great uh, great degree. Uh, we had uh, Brianna Morgan, who was a water conservationist that uh, worked for the city for many years. Uh, and, and based on their efforts, we have a lot of really good information on our website. Um, so you go if you type in how to save water, there is uh, um, watering guidelines that, uh, that are included, including uh, um, different... Uh, conservation tips and, and in terms of uh, landscaping. Uh, we don't talk specifically about drip systems or bubblers, but uh, the conversation is about uh, the time delay between waterings. It's not good from a water conservation perspective. It's not good for a landscaping perspective to water your plants every day or in most cases every week. So if you go on to how to save water on Lake Havasu City's uh, website, it'll talk about uh, trees. Even in summer months, you should be watering them uh, be, um, every uh, um, two to three weeks. Uh, so you get a heavy uh, dose of water uh, and just like uh, uh, you're trying to, uh, I guess, uh, um, reciprocate what the, the environment in Arizona does. They go long periods of time without any water and then there's a heavy dose of water. So that's a better way of doing things. So we have all that on, on there. I encourage folks to go to uh, How to Save Water on the city's website as well as Water Savers. Um, so that's out there and there's different brochures and guidelines and audit checklists and, and, uh, um, and then all the different uh, um, plant list recommendations as well. Um, and then uh, you alluded to it, uh, uh, Mr. Mayor, in terms of some upcoming conversations. We'll be working with uh, Dr. Wilson. He's, he's uh, taking a look at um, where we're at with the, the drought declarations what those impacts are to Lake Havasu City. And then uh, more importantly, for from my perspective, for the council is gonna be on what uh, type of code updates or improvements do we need to do in relation uh, to uh, um, any future drought declarations. 
So right now, uh, my opinion, my opinion only, is that our code is pretty weak in terms of uh, what triggers uh, action um, um, within the Lake Havasu City if there is a declaration, a drought declaration. Um, there's a lot, a lot of like uh, we can and, and, and may, and some of those items as is, is council may say that there's no, um, no watering your landscape whatsoever. So that that's that, that's a, that's a possibility in terms of what's out there, if we're in a, a, a severe water shortage. So with all, with all that, we're going to have a conversation here in about uh, uh, 60 days. Uh, Dr. Wilson is going to present and get some recommendations on actions that the council should consider, changes to the code that council uh, may consider, um, that, and, and uh, that has a direct relation to a declaration of a drought, a trigger that, that would uh, take place. So um, I don't think we want to be in a position where a drought declaration takes place and then council sits down and has these really difficult conversations at that time. Um, I think that if we uh, pull ourselves out of that situation and, and have a more of an academic conversation and big picture conversation, that'll help uh, guide that process prior to us being in that position. So a couple things there that uh, that uh, um, have a Sue is, is uh, uh, leading the way on. Yeah. One, Thank you, Mr. Good. Yeah, one ma'am. more thing. It's just that we're talking about a new commercial that we're doing. There's 138 trees there. So when they're brand new trees, and as we know, as we go into a drought, you have to water uh, new trees more than old trees. And just for the sake of we're asking that developer to put in that many plants. So again, speaking of government overreach, we are asking this developer, I guess he's putting in more than he needs to, but I, we should, I, these are concerning topics to me now. I'm kind of a more proactive than reactive. Once we get to the drought, then we got to tell everybody to stop watering their plants. I'm kind of just trying to um, put it into place. And I said maybe a few years we can keep an eye on this. We all know there's a water issue. Um, and I just don't really like to encourage contractors to be putting in 138 trees right now. Um, you know, that's all I have to say. All right, uh, Mr. Knutson, are you uh, clear on the direction of the council then to um, update the plant list to include different uh, irrigation systems or augment what's already on the website as you just described? Uh, certainly, and we, uh, we can make a more concerted effort to get that uh, information out uh, uh, more than we have already. All right, great. Yeah, so uh, this is a, um, a public hearing. Would anyone like to address the city council on this matter? Good evening, Council, Mayor. So some, sometimes when you look at codes and so forth, you gotta, you know, sometimes less worded verbiage is best. So a couple of things that I do agree on that Nancy had brought up, and I think Michelle did too, was uniformity. Um, I've been in some other cities here in Arizona and along their highways, you don't see chain link, wrought iron, wood, you know, as, as the buffer zone. You see a uniform, and that's not, to me, that's not government overreach. Um, I just did a bunch of landscaping at our property and a drip system versus a bubbler system and the bubblers have a high tendency to not function properly. They either shut off completely or they completely come off and that's when you get the geysers. Mm -hmm. A drip system will save about 70% water. So I don't think that's, with all due respect, Mr. Lane, that's not government overreached to recommend to the commercial people businesses and if they're building new businesses and putting in new landscaping to go commercial and then really get a little tighter on the, you know, one person's low water, or extremely low water plants is another person's, you know, they, I've had landscapers come to me and try to recommend plants and those, I know that that's not a low water plant. So you have to go show them, get real specific. And I think Mr. Knudsen mentioned they get specific on that. So I think like Nancy said, little steps, uh, if you, if we could just look at the, the drip systems for new new construction as far as uh, industrial. And then if something is, is is something you have in your code and then you have a sentence right after it that kind of nullifies it, why is it in there? You know, take it out. And it's not a bad thing. Think outside the box, that's all. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, Councilman Relay. I just wanted to clarify something there that, that Mr. Diaz had to say. Uh, I would agree that it's not government overreach to recommend. It, I thought it was government overreach to demand. It's uh, but the recommendations are just that recommendations. They can take their their choice of which type of sprinklers they want to use. Um, I think it's overreach when we tell them you have to use this type of a sprinkler. Would anyone else like to address the uh, city council on this matter? I see now we'll close the public hearing. 
uh, bring it back to council. Is there any last minute? Uh, oh, yes, sir, please uh, make your way to the podium. Just state your name for the record. My name's David Glenn. Um, what brought me here was the, the list of um, limiting what plants can be grown here. Uh, just about anything can be grown in Lake Havasu. Uh, everyone says, no, you can't because of the heat. Well, it's not the heat. I mean, uh, Bullhead City, Needles, Blythe, uh, Imperial Valley, those places are just as hot as we are. And, and they grow a number of things. Uh, the trouble here is that we're living in this uh, um, wash off in this mountain behind us. We have no topsoil. And we have a high rate of uh, alkalinity, and that has to be addressed. And so if you address the fact that there's no organic material in your, in your soil and that your alkaline is real high, if you address those things, you can grow just about anything you want. And I, I have plants that I grow that I have to go out of town to buy. I can't get the local nursery to buy them. Uh, but um, like one example, sea green juniper. It's a juniper, uh, they're eight feet tall. They don't use a lot of water. And um, so anyway, my point is, is that when we start limiting the plants, I think we first have to understand what the, our soil conditions are and what environment we're growing in. Yeah, thank you. That's a good point. All right, is there any final comments uh, from members of the council? The staff on this item? All right, motion to adjourn. All right, we are adjourned and we'll resume in about uh, 12 minutes for our regular council meeting.